Hello, welcome back. So in the previous video, we talked about um, the concept of virtual work and how it is a displacement in a frozen time. So using that concept, we are going to move forward and introduce another important concept called virtual work. But before I define it, I want to um, show you an example of why we, we like to work with virtual work instead of just a, just a regular work. So this example hopefully I can give you some intuition. So for that, let, ooh, where, where did those, let's look at one example. So I have an XY coordinate and I have, let's draw it like this. I have a particle, no, that's not a good drawing. This, this, that, here, yeah, this is good. So I have a particle that is attached to the origin by some um, constraint. You can think of it as a, I don't know, a hydraulic jack or a linear actuator. So this length is given as function of time, it is, externally prescribed by some other mechanism outside our control or outside the dynamics of the system. So I have this system, I can define the angle theta. Uh, and this theta is my generalized coordinate. So my Q is theta. And I have two actual cord, well, two coordinates of Y and X of this particle. And uh, let's assume for simplicity, I have a, a horizontal force acting on this particle. So let's calculate um, the work of that force, see how it goes. So for that, I want this dW of F, the infinitesimal work done by F as the particle moves some amount is f dot dr. So in this case, the component of displacement along the direction of force is simply um, dx. So I have f dx. That is my, my work. And remember using the transformation equation, my x is this L of t cosine of theta. So I can take the, the differential of that. So dx is going to be, because now both my top, my theta and L change, L of t. So I have partial x, partial L, dL plus partial x, partial theta, d theta, which is, um, cosine of theta dl plus l minus l sine of theta d theta. And from here, I can find the small work of force f to be f cosine of theta dl minus f l sine of theta d theta. Um, so that is the work of the force. It is a little hard to, to digest what it is. There's going to be an easier formulation later that I will show. But before that, let's also look at another force. So I have this constraint that the length of this um, hydraulic jack is prescribed. So this is a constraint. And that is, a, that is um, as I want to move it either further away or closer to the origin, this constraint is going to resist and there's going to be some reaction or constant force acting on the particle. So that would be this R force for reaction. 
So let's also calculate the, the work of that force. D W R is R times the, the, the displacement along that force, which is D L. And it is somehow prescribed by the system. So L changes with time. So I'll, I will have um, some DL that is non-zero. So this um, force R does actual work. So these are actual, actual work, which in this case is non-zero for the reaction force and something a little funny looking for the um, applied force F. Now let's go to virtual work. Let's look at the virtual one. So remember virtual work, let's define it. So let's call virtual work instead of F times D virtual work or force, F times DX, let's define it as F times Delta X, the virtual displacement. And remember virtual displacement is Delta X is same as DX, but we assume time is fixed. So there is no change of time. And if there is no time, DL is going to be constant or zero. So there's no time passing for this virtual displacement, meaning that my hydraulic jack haven't had time to change. So there's no DL and Virtual displacement is just minus L sine of theta d theta. So if I have that, my delta and the virtual work is going to be minus F L sine of theta d theta, which is an interesting concept. If you notice this F, L sine of theta is essentially the, the moment of that force about the origin, about um, um, this point O. Also, um, equal, equal um, definition of it is the, the actual effect, let's call it effect, effect, not force, that is in the direction of theta. So it is a rotational effect. And this is not a coincidence that the work of the virtual work of a force is in, in the same domain as that of our generalized coordinate. Let's also calculate the virtual work of this reaction force. So again, because equals because no time has passed, so this delta L is zero, or it doesn't exist. So this is this R times zero, which is zero. So now notice what happened. The, the actual work was the actual work of reaction forces were not zero. It depended on the motion of our driver or the input of the system. And the actual work of applied forces were a little hard to interpret. But the virtual work of reaction forces, reaction force is zero. And virtual work of applied forces is has a very nice interpretation. So that's that is kind of the reason why we work with virtual work rather than actual work in our analytical dynamics because of these ni nice properties. Um, so let me put a note here because, because virtual work of reaction forces, reaction or um, constraint, constraint forces are zero. 
we only need to um, consider or worry about um, applied or external forces. So that is a powerful result. Well, we didn't prove it, but gives you the idea that why virtual work is useful and um, and also why we, we care about only applied forces or we can care only about applied forces instead of all forces that also include reaction forces. Okay, with that introduction, now let's move forward and define virtual work for Let's define, define virtual work as function, as a function of generalized coordinates. So that is the goal of what we are doing. Okay. So imagine we have a system of particles and I have position of each particle is defined by Ri, position of particle. And I have applied forces Fi on the particle. And we just saw, we don't need to worry about the the constraint forces between these particles. So let's only focus on the result and um, applied forces. So let's again start with actual work, DW. Is DW of work I, work of FI on particle I is FI dot DRI. And as before, we have this transformation equation. Transformation equation for R, Ri as a function of um, my generalized coordinates. So if I have that equation, in the previous example, it was L cosine of Q or theta. So if I have such an equation, I can take its differential. So DRI would be partial or partial, partial RI, partial Q times DQ plus partial RI. This is QI. Oh, I need a summation. Let me write it down here. So from here, D or I is going to be summation of I equals one to N. Well, actually I have a notation J. J, let's not have this. J equals one to N. Uh, partial R, R, R I to partial Q, J, D, Q, J, and possibly plus um, partial R, I, partial T, D, T. Because we may have um, explicit functions of time. So with that um, equation for D, R, I, I can write DWI to be FI dot that thing. So summation J equals one to N partial RI partial QJ DQJ plus partial RI partial this is R partial RI partial T DT. Now this is the, the work of a single force. And from there, DW for all of the forces, which is sum of all DWIs, 
are in from 1 to n. I have n particles. Let's pretend. So this is going to be sum over i to capital N, sum over j, 1 to small n, the partial of ri, partial qj, dqj, and plus sum i equals 1 to big N, ri, this is vector, partial t, dt. So that is the actual work of all applied forces on the system. Um, let's see if it's a good time to, to simplify this. So let's, to simplify this equation, let's define, define gamma, well, that's an ugly gamma, gamma i j, to be partial or i partial q j, which can also define um, top and bottom with some um, derivative of time. So it would be also be r dot i. This is also a vector partial q dot. I, oh no, why do I have? Oh, uh, no, wait a second. Yes, I need this. So what it means, it's this um, gamma ij is actually sensitivity of some v, velocity of particle i, to change or to velocity to generalize coordinates, the velocity in generalized coordinate to q dot j. So um, maybe in the previous example, so what, what it means, if I wiggle around my q, the theta, the angle, how much my x dot or y dot, my two coordinates, would um, would move the velocity along these two directions? So that's what it is. Also, let's define gamma of i and t to be partial or i to partial t. Let's define that. And something to remember, these gammas are also vectors because we are taking derivatives of vectors. So with these definitions, I can write my dw slightly nicer and shorter. So um, let's see, what do I want to do? So let me take one, one shortcut. So these terms show up, these gamma show up here. So what I can do is my dr is summation of j equals one to n gamma i j q i plus gamma i t dt, and these are vectors. So with that, my dw is going to be sum over i equals one to n, sum j equals one to n, gamma i j q i plus sum i equals one to n, gamma i t dt. Now, now that we have this, it's time to go to virtual work. So virtual work, 
virtual work is work if dt is zero, so no time has passed. We're working with deltas. Wait a second. I'm missing this Q, D, DQ, DQ. DQ. Did I miss it anywhere else? No. So if DT is zero, I essentially don't have this term. So this term would be zero. And my virtual work that I describe or I write it as a delta W is going to be summation I equals one to the big N, J equals one to small N. And by the way, I, I think it was um, clear big N was number of particles and little a uh, number of cues, the generalized coordinates. And that, that gamma ij dq dqi. So that is the definition of, or not definition, the equation for virtual work as a function of generalized coordinates. Wait a minute, please. Where's the F? F is missing. It was F dot. My apologies. Summation J equals one to N. F I dot. And this one is F I dot. And this one is f i dot dot gamma i j d q i. Okay. Did I miss that anywhere else? No. Yes, here. F. Ooh, that's a lot of f. F i dot. Mm -hmm. That's better. So, all right. That is one equation for D, uh, DW or delta W, I'm sorry. Let me do another definition. Define, let's define QI to be this of i equals one to big N, gamma i j, no, f dot, f i dot, this is q dot j equals f dot gamma i j. So this is our definition. And a few things to notice, this is a scalar. And with that definition, let me rewrite virtual work. It is going to be sum of j equals one to small n, qj, d, q, j. And this is very important, important result. So what is this qj? It is called a general j, j, generalized force associated with or in, in the domain of in the domain of QJ and so in that case I have this generalized force that Q times BQ times, oh, this is, this is not D. 
I'm sorry, let's call it delta. And this one, delta. So if I multiply that generalized force by the displacement in that same domain, I get the work of that force. And this Q, QJ, is the equivalent, e equi equivalent um, effect, effect of all Fi forces in the direction, in the, in the direction, direction or domain of QJ. So if you have a bunch of forces acting on your system, let's go back to this example. So I have some force F being applied to my system. The equivalent effect of that force in the domain of rotation theta, essentially the moment in, in that domain, is this, that now I can safely call it, oh, call it, this is my Q sub theta, the generalized force, which in this case is a moment in the domain of theta, in the domain of rotation. And let me see if I'm missing anything. And it is a scalar, so it is very easy to work with. Um, this is kind of, if you can think of it, if you have a force in three dimension, and the force has components X, Y, Z in the, in the three directions of your coordinates along X, Y, Z. So this Q is the same concept. And if you have Cartesian coordinates as your generalized coordinates, it is turned out to be force. But if your generalized coordinates are in rotational domain, it, it is going to be some kind of moment in that domain. And one last thing to remember, remember we ignored reaction force, reaction forces because the Virtual work is zero. So, okay, I have, um, I think I've covered everything. So in the next video and last video of this module, we will talk about the principle of virtual work that you may have seen in other contexts such as static. And and in the future, in subsequent modules, we'll use, we'll take these concepts and go, go quite a distance. And we'll see how we can use these ideas to derive equations of motion for the system and in general, analyze the system. So, okay, I leave you with this and I see you next time.